And SportsCene continues with a different exclusive interview, this one with Sven Joran Eriksson, who's been in China for a couple of months now as the coach of Guangzhou RNF. And the Swedes' record's OK so far. Three wins from six games. He's guided the team to ninth in the table. Let's have a look at him. Sven played in his country's lower divisions but made his name as a manager in a 35-year career. He moved around several European clubs in the 1980s and 90s but gained international reputation in 2000 when he led Lazio to an Italian Serie A championship. It was the club's first title in 26 years. The Swede then became the manager of England, leading them to the quarterfinals of the 20. 2002 and 2006 World Cups only to be eliminated by Brazil and Portugal. After his stint with England in 2006, he served as coach of Mexico and Cote d'Ivoire, as well as coaching in Thailand and the UAE. On June the 4th, Ericsson joined Guangzhou RNF on a 19-month contract. He spoke to Wang Dong. Mr. Ericsson, when I sit down with you like this vis-a-vis, -vis, I can't believe that we can have this conversation here in Guangzhou, China a country where football is not exactly that strong, what actually has inspired you to come here to teach a local club? Because I think that football is going to grow very quickly in China. You are good in more or less every sport. Uh, Olympic Games, you took a lot of medals. Uh, one of the best countries in the world. So why not also in football? You've already got so many honors under your belt as a former England manager and also uh, a coach who has coached so many famous teams in top level. What do you want to prove here? You know, what to prove? You've got everything that you've already proven in the world. Well, I don't know if proving is the right word, a word but um, uh, so far I like it very much here. And it's a uh, rather new league. Uh, it has not been a professional league for a long time. So it's a big challenge and uh, of course uh, I want to help this club, RNF, to become bigger, uh, better and to play out in uh, Asia, Asian Champions League. That's uh, our target of course and uh, our dream and uh, I think it's possible, absolutely. What do you think from your own point of view that you can offer most to this team? I hope a little bit of everything. Uh, organization, yes. Trying to create a happy bunch of players. Try to create good atmosphere around you and around the team. If you don't have that, it's very difficult to, to play good football, to go uh, make good results. We have uh, conceded a lot of goals on uh, set plays, like uh, free kicks, corners and things like that. And uh, that's not good enough. I'm not talking about the four defenders, uh, I'm talking about the whole team. We have to defend better against corner kicks, against free kicks and things like that. How much leeway do you have? How much leeway, how many rights or specifically room do you have are you being given so far by the top management? No, I know what they want. They want uh, to climb higher in the table. They want out in Asia to play football. And I understand that they, they bought the club, they're making big investments, so of course they want to see the result, and uh, hopefully that will happen. Promoted to the top league only two years ago, Guangzhou RNF may not be the most high-profile job, but the world-renowned coach is optimistic about what his squad can achieve. In fact, the Swede has a bigger plan in mind, to challenge the seemingly invincible Guangzhou Evergrande and Marcello Lippi. And Marcello Lippi, of course, is no stranger to you at all. You know, you guys go way back. However, he's been very successful so far. Many are saying that it might be very difficult for you to copy or even surpass what he has been doing so far. Uh, it's always a challenge and you can always try. <laughs> but, of course, he's been very successful. And uh, I suppose that the club he works for has invested more money than any other club lately in China. And of course, if you invest a lot of money, normally the results coming. And uh, they have a very good team. More than that, they have uh, very good foreigners as well. So we'll see what we can do. They will not win the league every, every year, which it seems they will do this season again. And we are many points after, but uh, of course, you have to put uh, the target very high and um, try to 
to challenge the, the best. How do you so far assess the level of the Chinese Super League? I think the standard is good, rather good. Every game is very difficult, uh, very competitive. Uh, I have seen the teams we played against, of course. I've seen some other games, one live, uh, others in television. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very competitive team and I think uh, teams from bottom can easily beat teams in the top of, or of the league. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's competitive. Chinese football's reputation has been dragged through the mud in recent years, with corruption and match-fixing scandals overshadowing the past Super League seasons. For many supporters, the country's 5-1 defeat at home to Thailand was the last draw. The Chinese football situation overall is not really that uh, healthy or uh, optimistic yet. It's kind of dire, given that not long ago the Chinese team actually lost to junior Thai team 5-1 uh, and also because of that loss Camacho got sacked. As I said before it's, it's a pity that uh, Chinese football is not better than it is uh, when you're considering that how good you are in all most of the Some other sports. sports right? yeah, mm. Fantastic. But I think it is mainly because young boys and girls not playing enough football are you talking about a grassroots level? I'm talking about, uh, talking about the grassroots level because I think that's important. If the uh, major part of uh, young people don't play football, uh, it's going to be difficult to have a good national team, good standard on, uh, on uh, the football in, in, in the country. I'm, I'm quite sure that if you look 10 years ahead, all the clubs uh, in Super League and maybe in the league below will have a youth sector, football academy, football schools, because at the end it must be the clubs who educate uh, youngsters to play football. I can't see that any, any other uh, authority can do it. It must be the clubs who, who do it. And that's the way it works in Europe, South America, Central America. That must happen in China as well. But coach, before you came here, you know, the league actually was really uh, full of match-fixing situations and uh, bribery or whatever. And then now you are here. Do you have this kind of hunch to feel that actually it's cleaner than before? It's actually, you know, really more desirable than before? You're putting a very difficult question to me because uh, in all my football life, I never heard anything about uh, this or uh, recognize anything of it. So I really hope to not uh, be involved or hearing or uh, uh, suspicion about it, because those things has nothing to do with football or, or sport. Not at all. Mm. It's it's a beautiful sport. It's football is fantastic should be uh, a party every time it's a game. Uh, and uh, you go out and you fight, you win, you lose, you draw, <coughs> and uh, you should always use fair play. In your glorious coaching career so far, of course you have ups and downs and hiccups, but what might be the most memorable moment, if I have to ask you to pick one? Oish. Or one day. <laughs> one game or you know uh, every time you win a title it's it's big and if you can do it in Italy and you have a team which is not Juventus Milan or Inter then it's very big because it doesn't happen very often so I had the luck to be the coach with the Lazio when we won more or less everything we won beautiful if you look at uh, single games, many, to be on the bench when you beat Germany, in Germany, 5-1, it's, it's very good because it's, it shouldn't be possible. Beckham scores again now. Heskey's to his left on marks. Emil Heskey, could it be five? Yes, it is! Listen to this. Germany won, England five. And uh, of course that uh, historic, and will be for a long time, I suppose. I can't see Germany lose 5-1. <laughs> <laughs> for any time soon, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. 
I don't think so. But what might be the, uh, shall we say, the bitterest moment you perhaps don't want to be reminded of? <laughs> no, but uh, it's very easy. I can tell you, 2006, uh, when the World Cup. World Cup. It's Gerard saved. History has repeated itself. He's got the beating of England again. Uh, be, um, and then that was my last game for England. I was sure before the World Cup that we should reach a final, and we should have done it. It was one of the best teams there on yes. uh, in history for England. And yes, I know, but that's it. That was not very good, but um, that's life. Your contract, as we mentioned before, will be over at the end of next year, and by then. You know, Marcello's contract is going to be actually over by then as well. Uh, you two are really like, you know, good friends, but also arch rivals in a sense. Um, up to now, as we all know, the Chinese head coach position of the national team is up for grabs. Do you have your eyes on that as well? No. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Because I have a good job here and uh, I'm not ruling out anything, but I really hope to do a good job in this club, RNF and to make the fans happy, to make the owners happy, to make the players happy, and that we can improve and do good things. And um, if that will happen, I will be very, very happy.